Welcome to this video about the MCNIC software, where we take a look at feature coding using CAD. My name is Randolf Römer, software developer at Mouse Software. Okay, in this video we will cover the following topics. Uh, first, we start with understanding uh, feature codes, how you can use the point descriptions uh, measured outside in the field as feature codes. We will take a look at the code library and the associated uh, DXF template and see how the MCNX software is using these feature codes to automatically creating a CAD drawing. Then we will take a brief look at how to process some basic feature codes in CAD to get a quick overview of the workflow. Uh, in the feature coding library there are three types of codes, uh, line codes, symbol codes and control codes. We will take a look at how to use and modify these codes as well as using and modifying the uh, layer table and block table in the DXF template. And at the end of this video, we'll take a look at how to process advanced feature coding uh, in CAD uh, to get a good overview of the capabilities of the MCNX uh, feature coding system. All right, let's get started. Before we begin processing feature codes in CAD, let us take a brief look at the code library and the associated DXF template, which you can find at the Ribbon Quick Access Toolbar. Here you can select a uh, code library and associate it uh, DXF template, which you want to use for processing feature codes in CAD. By default, the standard uh, code library is uh, selected, but you can create your own code libraries and DXF template files uh, by saving the, uh, the current uh, one under a new file name and start editing uh, the new code library from there. Uh, we will see how to modify and edit these uh, uh, codes in a minute. Uh, for now, let's um, take a look at the line, basic line code and process this code to get a quick overview of the workflow. So let's press OK and open the basic um, feature coding example file. And here you see the uh, point descriptions, uh, which we're going to use as um, feature codes. And you can also see the uh, control codes, uh, B and CLS, for starting and closing lines in CAD. Uh, for now, uh, let us process these uh, feature codes by copying uh, these points to the clipboard. So we do that by selecting all the points and choose copy. And now to, um, we choose prepare points in CAD Revit to start the CAD software. Okay, now that AutoCAD is started, you can find the MCNX plugin uh, in the ribbon. And I just opened the uh, Revit Advanced Sample Project, which I exported in Revit in DWG file format uh, and units meters. To continue, we choose uh, Settings and we select uh, for drawing units um, uh, meters. Uh, and then we press OK. Now to start uh, processing feature codes, we choose insert points from clipboard. And uh, the wizard comes up and we see the, the points we just put on the clipboard, 48 points. So we choose next and we see the, the point group and we can store it in a different group if you like. Uh, for now we choose next uh, and we see the settings for the points. So we choose uh, for annotation point ID plus code, and then we choose next. Here we can specify how we would like to process the line work. So we choose process line work by code library, and you can see the standard code library is selected, uh, selected at the moment. We choose export 3D polar lines because we have a 3D file. So we click next. We see a review of the points. And at the end, we can click Finish and update the drawing to um, process these line works. So we click Finish, and then we choose uh, Update Drawing to process these feature codes. And uh, we see the lines are added and drawn as specified by the line codes and control codes of the MCNX feature code system. So now let's take a closer look at these line and control codes by turning on and isolate the layer of the point group. So we go first to wireframe and we're gonna turn on the point group. Then we zoom in a little bit 
and we're gonna isolate the lines just created and the point group and as you can see we see here the first line in the sequence uh, point uh, line code line uh, separated by a space and then the console code so uh, we see here the console code B for begin line um, so here the line is started and then continues uh, over here to the last point with console codes CLS which will close the line to the first point in the sequence. So as you can see uh, the feature coding system is ideal for example uh, renovation projects and similar projects where accurate CAD drawings of the current situation uh, is required. Now that we have seen a quick overview of the workflow let's take a closer look at the code library and the associated DXF template file. There are uh, three codes, types of codes, line codes, symbol codes and control codes. Uh, first let's see the line, uh, the line code uh, fence and edit this code. You see the code itself that you can use outside in the field, uh, a description and a layer of the DXF template file on which the line will be stored. Um, so this means that you can map this code to a predefined layer in the DXF template. And uh, you can do the same for uh, a point symbol. You can map this code to a predefined block in the DXF template file, which means that for every measured point with this code, also a block uh, is inserted in the CAD drawing at that location. Now let's see the symbol codes and uh, edit the um, lamppost code. Uh, here you see the, uh, the code itself that you can use as that in the field and the description. And here we see the layer um, of the DXF template uh, on which the symbol will be stored. Uh, again, uh, you can map this symbol code to the predefined uh, layer in a DXF template. And you can map the, um, the code to a predefined block uh, in a DXF template as well. Uh, so when you have selected the block from the list, um, you can specify the block size and block rotation. Uh, and if attributes are included uh, in the block, you can control uh, the attribute values as well. Uh, you can key in fixed values um, for block size and block rotation. Or you can select observation which means that the uh, second observation with this code will control the block size and or block rotation for the symbol. So if selected, um, the first observation with this code controls the insertion point of the block and the second observation with this code controls the block size and the block rotation. And if attributes are included, um, then you, can, you will see here an overview uh, and you can specify uh, what to display uh, in these attributes. Uh, for example, you can key it in or you can select a macro. Now let's see the control codes. A control code controls the way a line code is implemented. Uh, for example, to start a line or to uh, end a line. Uh, at the moment there are five uh, control codes and uh, any point may have one or more codes assigned to it. Point codes are separated by a space and to use a control code it must be entered uh, after the line code that is to modify, allowing a space for separation. And only one control code at a time can be assigned to a line code. Okay, now that we have seen um, how to modify existing codes and map them to predefined layers and blocks uh, in the associated DXF template, let's take a closer look at the DXF template itself. Before we open the DXF template file, let's create a copy of the standard uh, code library and the associated DXF template file. By saving it under a new name, let's key in um, my code library and then click save. So now we have a copy of the uh, standard code library and associated uh, DXF template file, which we can freely uh, modify to our needs. 
Okay, here we are in the AutoCAD software, and now let's open the associated uh, DXF template file, uh, which has the same uh, file name as the code library. Uh, you can find the DXF template in the Documents folder, MCNEX 2014 projects, a code library, and then the uh, units of the code library, in this case meters. And there you will find the, uh, the DXF file you just saved uh, in the MCNEX software. So we select that one and click Open. Uh, the DXF template file is an uh, empty file with a predefined layer table and block table. Uh, let's take a look at the predefined layers by clicking on the layer properties. And here you will see all the uh, layers with the colors and line types, um, which we can select in the MCNX software to use with our line and symbol codes. Uh, you are free to adjust the layers and create new layers if you like. When you have made changes, uh, just save the DXF file and it will be picked up by the MCNX software. Uh, let us also take a look at the block table, which contains all the symbols. Uh, we go to Insert and then we choose uh, Block Editor. And here we see all the um, um, symbols which we can select in the MCNX software as well to use with the symbol codes. Uh, again, you are free to adjust um, uh, the blocks and create new blocks if you like. And when you have made changes, um, just save the DXF file and it will be picked up um, by the MCNX software. Now let's add some new blocks to the DXF template. We go into the block editor. Uh, there are two blocks uh, present at the moment for uh, trees in the block table. Uh, let's add a couple more trees uh, which we want to use for our surveys. To do so, we can draw a new tree and use the block command to add it to the block table. But we can also copy and paste it uh, to the DXF template from another drawing. For example, we can copy this tree by pressing Ctrl plus C, select it, and copy it to the clipboard. And then we can paste it uh, to the DXF uh, template. And uh, the block is now added to the block table. We can see here that it's included. And now we can delete the block from uh, the DXF template because it's added to the block table. And that's it. You can repeat these steps to add more blocks to the DXF template. Okay, uh, now let's create a new symbol code and map this code to the block we just added to the DXF template. To do so, we go to the code library and then do symbol codes and we add a new symbol code. We're gonna key in a new code, three, three, give it a description. Uh, type 3. We select a layer from the DXF template. Say 3. And we're going to select the new block we just added to the DXF template. Uh, for block size, we choose 1. And uh, there are not, not any attributes added. So we click OK. And now we have added a new feature code. We press OK, and now we can, we can use this feature code in our surface. Let's uh, process some advanced feature codes, including the new feature codes we just added to the code library, so we get a good overview of the capabilities of the MCNX feature code system. Um, let's open the advanced feature coding example. Uh, and here you can see the point descriptions that we're going to use as feature codes. Uh, you see the line codes curb 1 and curb 2 uh, for the road uh, on a construction site. Uh, the control code uh, BC um, to start curves in CAD. Uh, a line code uh, island uh, for to measuring the parking lot. And also a symbol codes uh, to measure uh, the trees. Uh, now let us process these feature codes by copying um, the points to the clipboard. And then we go back to the CAD software. 
Okay, here we are in the CAD software. I just opened the Revit Advanced Sample Project again, which I exported in Revit in DWG file format. To continue processing feature codes, uh, we choose insert points from clipboard. Uh, the wizard comes up and we see our uh, points on the clipboard. Uh, we click next. We see our point group and we can store it in a different group if we like. Uh, for now we choose next. We see the settings for the points. For annotation we choose uh, point ID plus code. And for simple size we choose 150. And the same for text height. So we click next. For uh, processing line work we choose uh, by code library. And we're going to export 3D polylines because we have a 3D file. Uh, we click next. We see a review of the points. And at the end, we can click Finish and update the drawing to start processing these feature codes. So we click Finish and we choose Update Drawing. And we see the feature codes are processed. And we see the, um, the road lines, uh, the curves, uh, the parking lot and the, and the trees which we have uh, measured, measured outside in the field. Okay, to uh, take a closer look at some of these line and control codes, we're going to turn on the uh, point group. So first we're going to go to the 2D wireframe, and then we're going to turn on the point group. Okay, we see here some symbol codes, for instance the, uh, the tree, and also um, a control point. And here we see some line work, for instance here we start the uh, Align uh, Island, 6011 to 6012, it continues to 14, 15, 16, and then we see here um, that is starting a curve with the control code BC, begin curve. And um, by default, it's a three points curve if you don't specify an end curve. Uh, if you measure more than three points on a curve, then you need to specify an end curve. So it continues the line. And again, it starts a curve again here, a three points curve. And uh, at the end here, we use the control code CLS to close the line to the first point in a sequence. Okay, thank you for watching this video about feature coding using CAD. I hope it has given you a good overview. You can download a free 30 days trial from our website. It's not limited in any way from the full version, so be sure to download a copy. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us at uh, support at and again, thank you for watching.